Remember, for those people who think you've outsmarted the world, you've outsmarted your wife, and you've outsmarted your, your pastor, I want to let you know that you cannot outsmart Christ. Look what Christ tells her. And he says this. Jesus said to her, verse 16, as you're following along, go call your husband and come here. Because Jesus is desiring an honest and pure heart. I believe that there, what's going on right now is that Jesus wants to see if she's going to be true to him. And sincere and be truthful. Watch. And then verse 17 says, the woman answered and says, I have no husband. She's not lying. And notice what she says. And Jesus said to her, you have well said. You're not lying. You're honest. And come here. It says, verse 17, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. I, said, I read that already. And it said, Jesus said to her, I'm no, and verse 18, <laughs> Jesus says, you don't have no husbands. You have five. <laughs> and the one whom you are now, not, that you now have, is not your husband. In that you are speaking truly because God wants people who are going to be true, honest, and sincere. This woman wasn't lying. And at the end of this story, it's going to confirm what I'm saying this morning. Verse 19, the woman said to him, sure, I perceive that you're a prophet. Verse 20, our fathers worshipped on this mountain. And you Jews say that in Jerusalem is a place where one ought to worship. Verse 21, and this is where it gets good. Somebody say, it's going to get good. Is the projector working, Danny? Because we're going to jump all the way to the last slide. No, no, I can tell. I'm trying to keep up with Okay, good. <laughs> and then verse 21, it says, the woman, he says, Jesus said to her, woman, 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 believe me, the hour is coming where you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. It says, you worship what you do not know. It says, we know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23, it says, but the hour is coming. Somebody say, the hour is coming. Yes. Now is good. Now, the time now, right now, I want you to tell the person next to you, you need to pay attention now. And verse 23, it says, but the hour is coming. It says, and now is when the true worshiper, somebody say, I'm a true worshiper. I'm a true worshiper. That's it. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is somebody circle and highlight seeking. Seeking. Because that's what the Father is looking for. He's not looking for what you do or how you look or what title you have or what accomplishments you've done. He's not looking for anything but people who are seeking him in spirit and in truth and he shows this with this woman because he asks her questions to see what route is she going to take and he says you've done well by being honest and I'm going to show you and teach you something now woman that time is coming where you must worship in spirit and in truth with an honest heart and a true spirit and as I was doing this, God was really ministering to me. And, and many of us have this perception of what God is after. We have so much religion and so much garbage going on that we as human beings create stuff that God is after. And I want to let you know that the only thing that God is after, and He's seeking, and He's hungry, and He's thirsty for, are those people who are seeking Him nothing else. If you've gone somewhere else where they've told you something else, it's incorrect. Because God only cares about those people and God only wants those people who worship Him in spirit and in truth. And that's what God wants from you. So when you leave new life here and you've been invited here by a, a friend or somebody who really cares for you drastically so that you won't burn in hell if you don't know Jesus, that when you leave here is that you seek Christ with all your heart.
This woman was in a position where maybe what she had to offer wasn't enough. Anybody feel that way? If you are sitting in this room today and you feel that what you have to offer isn't good enough, I want to tell you something. For those people who don't know, me and my wife have been in ministry since the age of maybe 17. And um, when I came to the Lord, many of you don't know this, some of you who know me well do, know that back in the day, people thought and people spoke negativity in my life to the degree that I would never be able to learn or accomplish anything in this life because of who I was in the past. And my number one obstacle in doing what God had called me to do is recognizing that what I have to offer God is enough. And some of us think that it has to be like so-and-so's. Or it has to be like somebody else's. I want to let you know that the Father is seeking your worship. The way you worship. The way you offer according to the word of God. Why is the Father seeking worshipers in truth and in spirit? Because a very long time ago, where I don't know the time, because God is an infinite God, there was somebody who was in charge of worship. And he didn't do a very good job. That's right. Do you know what his name is? His name is Lucifer. You can find that in the book of Isaiah 14, 12, where it says that the morning star was casted out of heaven. In Job 38, 7, it talks about how the morning star sang unto the Lord, but he was casted out of heaven. And I believe that God is searching for people who worship him in spirit and in truth, because in heaven there's a void. Now you might be saying, well, there's angels up there. Yeah, but they were created to worship, not somebody who was willingly giving him worship. Now watch this. Now I believe that God is going around seeing who can praise him and worship him freely out of the depth of their heart because God is who he is. I believe that God is looking for people that have songs from the heart, not from the lip. I believe that God is looking to restore and populate in heaven the true worship. There are angels in heaven, and, and you can look at this in the Bible, but I was looking at it for a very long time, and I was looking for it. Do you know that there is not one instance in the Bible, after Lucifer was casted out of heaven, that anybody else sung in heaven? You might be saying, yeah, in the book of Luke, chapter 12, blah, blah, blah. It says that they said unto God, they didn't sing. There's a lack of song in heaven that we are to provide. You might be wondering, why is this battle in, heaven, in earth so tough? I'll tell you why. Because you took the devil's job. Have you ever walked into a job and they've replaced somebody with you? Because they thought that you might be better at doing it? And somebody started hating on you? Yep. I want to let you know that the devil's hating on you because you took his job. Because now the Father has given you the ability to worship and take his spot. Because Satan thought that after he did what he did, the Father would lack worship. That's right. But you know what the Father said? He said, uh-uh, I'm greater than you. I want to let you know Amen. something first. Amen. That God doesn't need you because he's going to create something or somebody else to do what he wants to do. Amen. So what happens is this. Satan thought he was going to be greater than the Father. So God said, que lindo. <laughs> que lindo. So the father looked at, at, at all of his people and said, this ain't going to happen here. He said, get out. Satan looked at him and says, without me, this is nothing. He says, get out. So he kicked out Satan and everybody else. So now the song is lacking in heaven. Right? And the father says, I want that thing. Hold it right there. You go down there because you don't belong here anymore. And I'm going to create people to worship me the way I like it. That's right. Well, you might be saying, well, the heaven, you know, everybody in, in heaven is, yes, but they've been created to do that. Not somebody who can willingly say, I want to worship you. Amen. And that's the power you have. But I'm not done with this whole analogy about Satan taking your, you know, you taking Satan's job. Listen to this. There are people, that, there, there are heavenly hosts right now exalting Jesus. And you might be saying, Father, I can't do this. There are people in, you know, there are heavenly hosts in heaven right now who are worshiping you and exalting you. I mean, Pastor Leo and all these deacons and everybody else, I can't give you what they give you. Listen, forget about what I give God because God is calling you to give what he's called you to give. And this woman at the well meets the Messiah. He prophesies to her. He just wants a true hungry heart. And I believe in my heart that God is wondering and saying, who's going to give me their very best? You might be saying, well, my very best.